if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we talked about one particular biodiversity pattern and that was latitudinal gradient. That means when we move, move from equator towards pole, how the species diversity changes. And we also saw the tropical and temperate region uh, comparison. What exactly favors a richer diversity in the tropical part? Now let us take one more biodiversity pattern and this is called species area relationship. Species area relationship and what exactly we mean by this and then we will come to the scientists and the actual outcome of the experiments or the analysis that the scientists did. According to this uh, pattern or rather this particular uh, statement says that if we go on increasing the area the species diversity is going to increase. We can understand this in a very simple manner like wherever we are if we just take that area, that colony or that particular location and try to analyze how many uh, different species exist in that particular area. You may find few animals, few varieties of plants in that particular uh, smaller area. It could be just a colony. Now if you increase this area and make it to your complete city, then state, so you will find as you go on increasing the area, the species diversity increases and there is a very simple reason for it. If we are talking about say a small colony, in that colony there are houses, there can be a park and in these areas we find very specific or limited number of animals and plants. We may find variety of trees, maybe uh, some eucalyptus, maybe some mango trees. So there can be a fixed or few number of those trees, species wise. Animals also, we may find some domestic animals, we may, we may find certain types of insects there. Now when we increase this to say a bigger city, the complete city, we will have more species. Reason now, there are some different habitats which are included in it. Maybe in the city there is a little water body, so if water body is included in this area, aquatic plants and animals will get added to that area. So this means or this particular pattern says that as area increases, species diversity also increases but up to a certain limit now if we have uh, take uh, the example which we took was from our colony to the entire city now if we take the entire state maybe the species diversity would increase further because in our uh, state there can be uh, different types of habitats. There can be grassland, there can be farms, there can be some rocky areas. Now if we start increasing it further and say we take all the states and we take the entire country. So in every state there is going to be a water body, there is going to be a rocky area, there is going to be a dry land. That means in all the states pretty much it is going to be the same. So you go on increasing the area, species diversity is going to increase but only up to a limit. After a limit, it is going to become more or less steady. The scientist who did his research on this and gave us this statement was Alexander von 
Humboldt. And he uh, gave this relationship, gave this uh, conclusion of his experiment in two ways. When we plot a graph, the area and the species diversity. In a simple manner, if we plot the graph, as we go on increasing the area, the species diversity increases and ultimately it's going to become more or less steady. So he said that normal is a rectangular hyperbola. But when this was the same information, when it was interpreted using log, it came out to be a straight line. And the equation that he gave was log s is equal to log c plus z log a. Now what do these things mean? S is species diversity. A is area. Z is the slope of the line and C is Y intercept. Out of these, the most important that we have to think about or understand clearly is Z. What exactly is meant by the slope? The straight line which is obtained using the log table, log calculation, this has a slope. If the slope is more or slope is less, that is going to tell us that the species diversity in a particular area is more or less. I'm going to draw two lines. Suppose we make one line like this, the straight line, and the other is this one. Both are representing the slope. If you are talking about, say this is A and this is B, if you are talking about A, this means in this much area, species diversity is more. And if you are talking about this line, then in this much of area, species diversity is less. So, this line, the slope, the Z, is actually important for us to understand whether a particular area has more species diversity or less species diversity. So in normal interpretation, it's going to be like a rectangular hyperbola, but if you use the log, it is going to be a straight line. And this is the equation that we have to remember. We will talk about two more scientists and their contribution. This part is over. In this, when we talk of bio, uh, biodiversity patterns, there are two aspects. One pattern is according to the uh, latitudinal gradient and other is the area base. One more scientist, David Tillman, he gave a conclusion based on his findings. He said, actually he used the word plot because his survey was based on all the open land which was available. He said the plot or the land which has more diversity shows less year-to-year -year variation in biomass. Land and because he used the word plot, we will write that also. The land or plot which has rich diversity or more number of species shows less year to year variations or variation in biomass. What exactly is meant by this statement? This says that if you compare two land pieces, in one there is just a grassland. Maybe a crop was growing, there was a grassland and the other area has grassland, trees, 
shrubs, some herbs. So what is going to happen in these two areas year to year? If we talk about grassland, Grasses are going to dry up as soon as the grass dries up or the crop matures, the animals which were surviving on that particular land area, on those particular plants, they will also move away from that area or they may die. But if there is a land uh, piece which has uh, green trees, which has grasses, which has shrubs and herbs, there minor changes are not going to affect the entire uh, biomass. So this is what was uh, explained by David Tillman. Then one more thing again related to biodiversity is that when or uh, let us say he uh, gave an anomaly. We know what anomaly is. You relate to something by taking some totally different kind of example. The name of the scientist Hellrich. So what he did was Hellrich, he gave river, oh sorry, rivet popper hypothesis. Rivet popper hypothesis. Now what exactly are rivets? Rivets are nothing but nut bolt kind of things which are like sort of sealed. And popper is like if you remove it. So he compared the complete biodiversity with an airplane. So he said that if all the biodiversity or our complete ecosystem is like the airplane, every rivet is a species. So if we uh, think of a plane, as our entire globe and everything which is there on the globe. And every rivet which is there on the plane is one species. Now in the plane, when they build, make the body of the plane, what they do is they take aluminum sheets and they cover one over each other, uh, these pl place like this. And then they put rivets so that there is no movement, there is no space in this. And now comparison part is done biodiversity, the living and the airplane. So it is like an anomaly. After that, he said, like every time we step into that plane, the person takes out one rivet. It's like we removing one species from our ecosystem or from our biodiversity. So what is going to happen to that plane? Suppose we get into the plane and we remove one screw or one rivet maybe that species is not that important so nothing major is going to happen to that plane but suppose we remove a rivet which is like a very crucial uh, rivet maybe it is near the emergency exit maybe it is like near the window uh, pane so what is going to happen to that uh, plane so ultimately the entire plane's body is going to fall apart the same thing is going to happen with our ecosystem like every time you remove one species from that ecosystem, from our biodiversity, a stage is going to come when the ecosystem is going to fall apart. So this is exactly what he means by this uh, rivet popper hypothesis. So these are the few important things, the two, two scientists and their contribution or analysis about biodiversity. Now in the next part we'll take up the causes of biodiversity loss.